It's the Tuck and Tuck Show, brought to you by The Arb at Tappan Square, Prestige Detailing, Oberlin Weekly, of Tuck and Tuck Show, Ahmad and Khalid. Hey, 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 hey. We are back once again, baby, baby. I'm feeling it today, man. I'm on a roll. I got a little sleep in today. Welcome to the Tuck and Tuck Show. Uh, we got a special guest. Uh, it's going to be uh, Mr. Chase Ferris coming in, and uh, we're going to talk a little probably football and his Save the Children organization he's got going on. What's going on with you, man? I see you got your your new shirt on. Yeah, I got my and, and then you come out with hey 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 man. It's yo change, yo yo. I got to change up, man. That shirt's for oh, you. I got to get no, my own. I don't say yo yo yo. That's your tagline, <laughs> not mine. Get my own brand back out there. <sighs> well, first of all, um, let's talk about Sunday because that was great. The meet and greet went great. I th- like to thank all the people that came out, um, especially all the former guests. They were fantastic for coming out. And then everything turned out great. We sold a lot of t-shirts. Looked like everybody had a pretty good time, don't it see? It looked like it. Getting it's to meet each other and uh, hang look. out. It was good to see all the, almost all the former guests come out, without exception of a few. But it was a it was a really nice event. I like to think, especially um, like the Jackson family. If you if you have just the Jackson family, that's, that's going to fill that's up. That's a up. crowd. Yeah, yeah that's going to fill up a whole room, event. So. Yeah, Kurt Russell showed up, and Brittany and Bryce, and Miss Meadows, yeah, Miss Meadows, and uh, Dave Whitworth. There yeah. was a lot of people there. Rachel McRae and Antoine, they were there. So that was it. Was a good event. Everybody won a little something. Pretty much everybody got a T-shirt or something, yeah. you know. So bottles yeah. of wine, uh, free uh, prestige detailing. So yeah. it went good. Everything went good. I was I had a nice time. So was, what, uh, what else is going on today? Ah, uh, man, same old same for me, man. Just working, trying to get through the week. That's all I, you know, that's all I do. That's why I just come, just come to you and ask you what's going on for the right. week. You're the well, one you out and about, you're, man. You said you're wide awake today uh, and ready well, to I just, go. I just woke up. That's why I was late getting here. Not that everybody out there knows that, but yeah, I was running late, man. I couldn't get out to bed. It's a slow time of the year. Not a lot goes on this time of year. I mean, uh, the sports is in the middle of everything. It's in the football season is over. Um, basketball season is in the middle and there's, um, I'm, I'm kind of interested in going to see, um, baseball. Oh, before we go to that, there, there was a problem. Before <laughs> oh, we get to that. Uh, the mouse has Alzheimer's. Before, no, before we get to that, um, <laughs> last week when we did the interview with little Henry, Scooter Tuco. Scooter Tuco. Yeah. I had a call from, um, his father. Of course. And he said, you know, you mentioned everybody but one person. And I forgot to mention his dad when I said, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. I forgot to mention Henry. So he said, look, dad's got to stick together because we don't ever get any credit. Any recognition. Which yeah. is true. And yeah. I did forget him. So I'd like to shout him out this week and say, you know, Henry is a great dad and he's a great person all around. So I I, I didn't want to forget him. And All right, big hand. And not, and not, we, we'll take know, care of you. Yeah. He's not, and then also this week, I didn't know this till today. There's an anniversary coming up. Matt. Anniversary is coming up on Thursday. How many years? 26, 26 years. years. Melinda's put up with him for 26, 26 years. years. He's, yeah, I, I didn't know they would have been married that long. And they said 26 years. And, and Matt was saying how great it is. And he went, Trey, are you, you hear him laughing back there? Well, I don't know. But yeah, that 26 years is a long time. I don't know how they met or anything. I think they, um, we have to have him put Melinda on the show. And ask her. There's some old reels about when they met. She says something about she had long hair down her back and she suckered Matt into dating her or something. She said he was, <laughs> she said something about he was a real sucker. She said it was easy to reel him in. That was no problem, man. We were working on, before you came in, we were working on uh, live call ins. So we could be able to, when we hooked it up so you can call in the show. And I can actually hear you and take calls. So oh, yeah, that'll be the that's coming down the road when we go to the R at the end of the season. Maybe we can uh, take some calls. Yeah, that would be great if we could do that. Well, you're coming up on your uh, one chip challenge, man. How you feeling? I'm not scared of no chip. Come on, bro. It's not, <laughs> that don't scare me. I've, I was married for twelve years. That that chips don't scare me. Chip, chips don't do nothing for you. Nah, they will. 
I'll, I'll I'll get a couple of beers and wash that ship right on down. That yeah. ain't nothing. Yeah, we'll have a, we'll have an ambulance standing by for you. Yeah, wait. waiting that for you. That ship ain't nothing, bro. We already know that ain't nothing. A chip. I've been listen. I've been almost dead a couple of times. I'm scared of no chip. <laughs> chip challenge. I don't I don't know what you even. I can't and I don't drink milk. So I can't drink milk. I don't know what you're gonna do to well, cool, have a cool couple, it down. Couple beers around, and that's all I really need. Yeah. Okay. But coming up today, we got Chase Ferris, and uh, Chase is a a Super Bowl champion, a national champion, and he's uh, had to save our children and Elyria. So it should be a great show today. Yeah, I'm, we should. I'm, I'm excited about today's show. He's from the community. He's doing good stuff in the community. So I'm excited. It's like I was scooter too cold. I was excited and. For that, the should mayor be, was great. I you should excited. be excited when I walk in the door and I'm here ready to start the show. Man. All right, Matt, it's time to go to break. When I come in, you should be, you should get ex, <laughs> so you cut. should get excited. Go ahead and cut. <laughs> you go ahead and cut now. All right, we'll be back. Uh, what about thirty seconds or so for talking to talk. Welcome back to the Tuck and Tuck Show. Today's guest is brought to you by The Art at Tappan Square. Hello, yo, yo, yo. We are back <laughs> to the Tuck and Tuck Show. Uh, we'd like to thank our guest, Mr. Chase Ferris, who is the director of Save Our Children. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Feeling all right? I'm doing good. We've been trying to get you down here for, what, two, three weeks now? Yeah. Man, yeah. <laughs> don't get shy on us I now, man. Listen, listen, I'm not getting shy. This, this slight pause is just because life's been life, and you know how that goes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough, man. So, uh, give me a little insight on the, your organization that you're running here. All right, Save Our Children is an after-school program that we got from two thirty to two thirty to six thirty on um, Monday through Friday. We go in accordance with the Elyria City School schedule. Um, so if they don't have school, we don't have programming. But we're um, an academic first program focused on the improvement of literacy, so like reading, math skills, um, okay. social, emotional learning, community service, college and career readiness. Um, oh, cool. K through 12. 12. So we, I mean, we we don't do everything, but what we do, we try to be the best at it. Well, as long as it's helping the students. I mean, that's, that's the important thing. There's a lot of students who don't have any tutors or anything. They don't know how to get that, you know, For sure. in and their system. Oh, and it's completely free. Oh, uh, so are you government funded or just um, nonprofit or nonprofit five hundred one c three? Okay, um, we we write grants. Oh, all right, that that always works out. So you said you do social and and emotional learning too? Yes, sir. I, I mean, because that's I think that's one of the more important things now, especially after COVID. Yes, because they were in the house or not in school. So do you see like a lot of problems with kids after COVID? Because it seemed like it was. That, that had to be a difficult time for children. And did your and your program couldn't run in because there was no nothing going on. Yeah. So I ended up coming in um November twenty twenty. So kind of towards that um that transitional period where it was like, okay, COVID's really like we're in the thick right. of it. Um so for us um to, to go from twenty students, you know what I mean, every other day to once they opened it up, we, we packed out eighty, you know what I mean, K through eight. And this past year, we we increased that to ninety five K through eight. That's good. Um, so, with the students though, it's like think about it. That whole time they were in the house, they some of them maybe had iPhones where they could FaceTime, but majority yeah. of them their communication skills are lacking. Um, their their interpersonal communication skills, like sitting here staring face to face, eye to eye, they can't do it. Um, they can't sit still. Um, so so trying to help them, you know, deal with their emotions, figuring out how they're feeling and and how to navigate that is, is, is huge right now right so you do that now uh, i hate to go this but i know that when you do that i know athletics will help a child with that as well because they'll be part of a team 
and they can be outside. And a lot of kids nowadays, they need to burn off energy because they're right. always inside and they're always on the phone or on the computer. So do you run your program along with some uh, like extracurricular stuff that they can do outside of the program? Um, so like I said, we partner with um, other organizations in the community. So like Little Pioneers, we have kids that play for the Little Pioneers. Um, so we'll throw a van together. And if we have like 10 or 12 kids, we'll drop them off over there to make sure they get what they need to get to. Right. Uh, we partner with the Metro Parks. I know we're getting ready to do a swimming program with them uh, for our middle school kids. So we're going to take 10 kids at a time and, and go over to Splash, come out here to Overland, you know, Splash Zone, and teach some kids how to swim. Mm -hmm. uh, we, ha we have a couple of things that we do, and in the summer it really ramps up. We go on different field trips, whether it's a Coast High in Columbus. We went to Pudding Bay. Uh, we went to the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Uh, we even went to Lakewood Park just just to show them different things. Um, but for us, it's it's funny when you say like these kids in sports because you got a lot of young ones that are really good, and you got a lot of older ones that just aren't coordinated at all. Like you right. can tell they they rather play two K than play basketball. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where we're at now, man. Nobody wants to leave the house. Everybody wants to be on the video games. And that. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we talked to the mayor, he said he was building like a, a e e arena. Yeah, yeah. He's and sports. he also said he's working on getting a pool for the center of Illyria. He right. wanted a pool for the whole, the whole city located. to yeah, centrally located to, to, for everybody to use. So I mean, I'm sure you coordinate a lot of stuff with him. Yes, yes, yes. We're, the city of Illyria is a big partner, like partner of ours as well. Um, like I said, anything that we need to get done, I mean, they're they're more than willing to help us navigate you know, whatever it needs to to be navigated. So does he, do you have enough people to, to work with your program? Because everywhere I go, there's somebody that's hiring or they don't have enough people. So, and I don't know if your program is volunteer or if it's paid. Um, it's paid. I'm always hiring. Like I said, I'm never going to turn down a quality employee. Yeah. Right now, like I said, we operate about 130 kids. Um, I have a staff of about 23 individuals. Some work in the schools, some don't, some are retired, some aren't. Um, but for the most part, um, it's, it's just a collaborative effort. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, my biggest thing is I treat each one of these kids like they're mine. So if it's a great fit, I'll know. And if it's not, I'm sorry you can't come around my well, kids. That's, yeah, because everybody can't deal with kids. Yeah. Exactly. What's your biggest need right now as far as people you, that you're hiring? I mean, you need social people in social work or doctors, psychiatrists. What, do you, what are you looking for? Um, right now, I'm really looking to partner with some individuals um, that are that are more like, like you said, psychologists. Like mm -hmm. those those type of talks um, really help to break down barriers because we have a lot of kids who who had to grow up way earlier than they should have. And yeah. We have kids who who play parent at home sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's like, hey, um, save our children is a place where a kid can come and be a kid, be be relaxed so, in the so, environment. So yeah. for some of these kids, they they come in hard. So it's like an onion. You got to peel back that, peel back those layers until it's like, okay, they trust you. So it's just consistency, effort, and and, and love. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good, I mean, that's a great thing. And I didn't even know the program existed. So, I mean, do you want more publicity for the program? Or are you trying to get the work? Are, are you at capacity or how's that work? Is, right. is there a certain, is there a certain level where you say, you know, I just can't do any more children? Or are you always going to accept as many as you can? So so for us right now, we keep a one to 10 ratio. Um, okay. So one staff member to one student. I mean, one staff member to 10 students. Um, so for us, like I said, I would love to take every kid I could. Right now, I have a waiting list of over 50 kids to get wow. in. Um, so right now, we're really more so trying to look for new spaces to expand. Mm -hmm. um, so so for us, um, we have a few things in the works, trying to, trying to figure out the best, the next the best way to order our steps in order to, to make the greatest impact. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with uh, Chase Ferris and Save Our Children program, and we'll talk a little football and a bunch of other stuff. All right. Be back with Tucker Tucker. Tuck.
Welcome back to the Tuck and Tuck Show. Today's guest is brought to you by The Art at Tappan Square. All right, we're back on Tuck and Tuck with Chase Ferris. And during the break, you were telling us how you came to be in the program, how it started, and how you got started. Right. Like I said, just like you guys, I had no idea it existed until, let's say, what, four years? Well, probably about like six years ago. Um, my junior year in college. Six years ago I was on my junior year in college. I'm a little older than that. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't Bra- worry about it. We ain't gonna fact check you. <laughs> brain, brain is getting a little foggy as he gets older. That's all we right. We ain't gonna fact check you. I'm gonna turn thirty this year, so listen, I'm I'm, I'm feeling different. You know, yeah. I'm just I'm just waiting away, just buying my time. Yeah. You know, as my old head say. But uh, I think it was my junior year in college. I got a phone call like, "Hey, would you want to come home and read to some kids?" Uh, so Tracy Sprinkle and I both showed up. Um, and we're at Asbury Church over on the south side of Elyria. Um, we ended up reading these books. There's about 30 kids in one room. Um, and I think that's when they had ended up doing like a revamp of Save Our Children. So as we read the books, I'm saying like, man, all these kids, like what's this program called? I never heard of it. And yeah. they're like, yeah, Save Our Children. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> now fast forward, fast forward like six years from then, uh, I come back and they're like, hey, like, how, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing pretty good. Um, finished playing ball. Now I'm, I'm in financial services over at uh, Northwestern Mutual. I'm just like, it's, it's kind of not my thing. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm for my people, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not trying to be the one whose friends are ducking the calls when, yeah, you know, when, when it's time to make those insurance, insurance calls. calls. Yeah. Hey, hold on, Chase calling me. It's, it's 3.30. You know, I can't answer until after 6. So I know you'll be <laughs> off work. But, um... I just walked out one day and I was like, man, I'm cool. Like, I, I just, I'm gonna leave this alone. And then I got a phone call, boom. And it was just like, hey, would you, you mean, want to come interview for this position? And I'm like, what is it? And they were like, well, the executive director at Save Our Children. And I'm like, oh, really? I was like, tell me more about it. <laughs> They're like, remember you came, blah, 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 back when? I'm like, what? <laughs> Still had you so, on file. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay. So I get back there and I'm looking, and I'm like, how many kids do you serve? 125. How many K through eight? 80. How many teens do you have? Blah blah blah. I'm like, oh man, really? Big so program. Like, and they moved buildings, so they had moved from they had moved from that that one room, that one room literally at uh, Asbury Church over to First Congregational. Now they occupy the whole new the the newer renovation part of the church, which is an entire third floor. So now they have six classrooms upstairs. Uh, a larger classroom in the basement. And then at the same time, that church also has a gym in it. So now they have, you know what I mean, some room to grow. Okay. Yeah. Um, but with me in the last two years, I maxed it out. <laughs> Need a new space. Listen, we, we went from, you know what I mean, having five classrooms in a STEM lab. I turned the STEM lab into a classroom for just kindergartners. Um, we originally had kindergarten, first grade, and second grade in one class. And I was just like, you know what, let's take the kindergartners out so we can get a teacher with them. Right. You know what I mean? A smaller group and, and make it more intimate so they could actually learn and, and get those personal skills. Because when you got kids that it's their first year going to school compared to some that are in second grade, it's like, okay, these kindergartners are a little more timid. These second graders is like, they grown men in here. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's, 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 it's a little different. So just, you know what I mean, restructuring different things like that and, and finding ways to improve and get more kids in there. Um, it's been my overall goal and just making sure that the time that I, I'm here with my community and the time that we're spending together, um, I want to maximize that and, and maximize the impact. So uh, what's in the future for you in as far as this is, uh, Save Our Children? And save where our, where so, are we trying to go now? For Save Our Children, like I said, right now we're looking to expand. Um, so for us right now, it looks like finding a new space for us to, to occupy to where we can double our programming. Because like I said, right now I have a wait list with over 50 kids on it, that's almost three classrooms. You would think, since it's for the people of Elyria and the school system, that the school system would, like, give you a section of the school. They just built that new school. Yeah, all the schools are new. Yeah, so why can't they just keep an after-school program at the school? Um, like I said, for them, it's, it's, it's a lot that goes into that. I know the teachers, you know I mean, with this, this COVID climate, they're, they're burnt out. You know what yeah. I mean, the, the, the space, you know what I mean, that they have right now, it's, it's it's still new. You know what I mean? When things are new, you you kind of like hold it a little bit more. Uh, what's the word? You hold it a little bit closer to the chest. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Until you yeah. can until you can figure out how everything works or how that looks for you coming down the road. 
that's cool. But for us, I feel like save our children having our own makes it that much better. Okay. You know, I, I, it's, it's great. It would be great to be in the school, but to have your own is. Yeah, you can yeah, run it the way you want to. Yeah, exactly. you, yeah. without any guidelines or regulations. You can do yeah. build a program. No regulations. I'm not yeah. the type to walk on eggshells. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Want to do it your own way. So, since you know, you probably know people that can come in, and like you came in and read to the kids. Yes, you can probably bring other people in and and do programs um, with the kids as well, right? Yes. So, do you have like people you work with in in the past, like people you play with, come in and you know talk to them, give talks to them, and motivate them? You might be just be motivation enough, though. Listen, like, look, man, I'm telling I'm you, <laughs> I'm but telling the problem you. is when they get used to you, like that's just Mister yes, Bears Mr. walking Bear. around. Yeah, right yeah. now, they don't. Yeah. I'm telling you, like if I go to a school, like every week, I go to three schools. I go to Westwood. I go to Westwood Middle School, which is attached to the elementary because they're all in one. I go to North. Mm-hmm. I go to Northwood at least once a week because I have a mentoring group over there with eighth graders too. Um, and then I go to the high school. But when I walk through that lunch period at Westwood. And, and them first graders, second graders, third graders in there, it's a uproar. Ah, oh, Mr. Chase is here. Mr. Chase is here. <laughs> See, oh. yeah. And it's kids. Now, think about this. I only have one kindergartner at Westwood. Mm-hmm. I have a few third graders. I might, I maybe have, like, ten kids at Westwood Elementary. Yeah. But the whole elementary is just going crazy. I remember Mr. Chase. <laughs> like, it's wild. And I'm like, I don't even know how. Like, a third of these kids, and they weren't even born when I was That's playing. That's what I was going right. to say. They, they yeah. don't remember you. Yeah. Know, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like. To be to be able to have that type of impact in my community, like I'm gonna run with it. Like, yeah, right. yeah. It, the, the more good I can do, you know what I mean. Name with that recognition type of goes a long way, man. man. What? But like you said, them kids are there. Kindergartners, they never seen you play, and at even all. if they see you now, they don't know what they're looking at. Exactly. So they, you must be doing a real good job with the program, then. Yes, yes, yes. And, or there's somebody, kids, you know, they, they might be like, "Hey, go talk to Mr. Ferris." <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. Have, having problems with my kids, sending them to, send to the fairs. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm telling you, I get these recommendations like, "Hey, yeah, yeah. he's That's having such problems, having an issue." You, you might want to talk to Mr. Ferris over there at Save Our Children. Right. He does a great job with the yeah. guys and, and, and turn, tends to learn how to get the, the kids to settle down a little bit. And yeah. I'm like. No, that's good, yeah. though. That's that's what you want. Yeah. Once, awesome. once once parents start looking for you, hey, I'm having a lot of problems. That's actually a good thing, man, because you got a lot of these single moms and stuff. They can't handle their kids. Some of these boys, they just can't handle it. They need, I can understand they need a, a man to look up to. They need that male image. I can, I can understand that. I was raised by a single mother. So, right. like. Seeing, you know, I mean, being out in this community and, and being that male figure, like I'm sitting there, like the like for instance, little pioneers, they had over almost a hundred kids out there playing this season. Wow. Seven U, nine U, eleven U, hundred kids. I'm sitting like the the seven U, well, the nine U team had forty players on it. The nine U had more players than the the middle school, cool. seventh grade and eighth grade put together almost. Yeah. Okay. They're looking for something to do. So I'm out, I'm out there like, hey, what's going on? So now when I walk through, they're like, hey, what's up, coach? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Blah, blah, right. blah. Yeah. Or if I go over to a, a basketball practice or something or a, whatever it may be, like I'm just – I'm here. Like I said, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I, t- I tell everybody, listen, just turn right. I'm always there. I'm always there. Right. We're going to go to break, and we're going to come back because I don't know how many segments we – we usually do two segments, but we're going to go That's back. going real fast. Listen, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to do a couple more. We'll be right back after this.